Welcome. The focus of this video will be Pope Benedict XVI and his involvement with Louisa Picaretta's cause and her writings. As a reference for this video, we're relying upon the interactions as described by José Luis Acuña with Benedict XVI and is faithfully documented by his daughter, Alexandra Acuña. Let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. His Eminence and Most Reverend Cardinal Joseph Rassinger, Prefect for the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, during the pontificate of His Holiness, Pope John Paul II, has been chosen by the Holy Spirit as the Supreme Pontiff of the Holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church, precisely in these times in which the era of the third divine fiat begins as the fulfillment to the petition of the Our Father. And His Holiness, Benedict XVI, knows about it, as God had prepared him over time, making him know and study the writings of Luisa Picaretta, the little daughter of the divine will, chosen by God for the mission of opening the doors of the kingdom of the divine will on earth, as it is in heaven. And this is the story. It was in the year 1989 when Jose Luis Acuna, who lived in Acapulco, Mexico, gave to his bishop, His Excellency Monsignor Ricardo Guizar Diaz, the last book on Don Octavio Michelini that he had translated and published, The Cup is Overflowing, with an appendix written by himself. Four years previously, in 1985, when my dad had bought a house in this diocese to live with us, his family, he went to greet our bishop and to introduce himself personally, as he had already been in contact with him once, precisely because of the two previous books of Father Michelini, translated and published by him, Monsignor Huizar, had requested these books for priests in the diocese of Aguas Calientes, in which he was the auxiliary bishop, before being made the first bishop of the then recently established diocese of Atla Caboco. Since then, they had established a spiritual, cordial, and respectful relationship. My dad, together with my mom, Marcela Rincón de Acuña, visited him once in a while and took advantage of this talk to him about the writings of Luisa Picaretta and gave him some of those he had already translated. In August 1986, His Excellency went to consecrate our private chapel, dedicated it to the Virgin assumed into heaven, and every August 15th, he would celebrate Mass in that chapel. Monsignor Guizar thought that the content of the appendix was up to date and of great importance. At the end of 1989, when he made his visit a visit that every five years every bishop makes to the Holy Father to inform him about the diocese in his charge. He also made an appointment with the prefect of the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, the Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, and talked to him and gave him the appendix written by my father. The Cardinal looked very interested because before so many problems and attacks to the church inside and outside of her. He wanted to have a more luminous view of the future of the church. And the appendix talked about the attacks and problems of the church, but also that these attacks originated precisely by the devil and his partisans to impede or delay in the church and through her in the whole world the establishment of the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven, the purpose for which the church was founded by Jesus Christ. However, 
God's decrees are eternal. There is nothing or anybody that can impede them to be carried out. The creation was an eternal decree, and nobody was able, is able, or will be able to impede it. The incarnation and redemption was an eternal decree, and there was nobody able to impede him fulfilling it. In the same way, the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven is an eternal decree, says Jesus himself. Eternal incarnate word of God announced it, asking for it, and making us ask for it as well. And there is nothing or nobody that can impede him in this. The harm is for whoever doesn't want to receive the goods and the fruits of the fulfillment of those decrees, but to impede them. Nobody, neither the devil nor the wickedness of the creature, absolutely nothing or nobody. There is a magisterium received from the same mouth of Jesus. Thy kingdom come, they will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it will come, and it will be done, guided by the magisterium of our Holy Mother, the Church. Let's open wide the doors of our hearts to the Redeemer and to the kingdom of God on earth, on us, in us, as it is in heaven, as we know that this kingdom is the full fruit of the incarnation of the Word. And such reads the appendix that was being referenced. Next is the interview with Cardinal Ratzinger. A few months afterwards, in May 1990, my parents planned a trip to Italy to visit the places of Luisa Picaretta and Corato. Due to the interest shown by Cardinal Ratzinger, my father thought of visiting him in order to tell him more about the kingdom of the divine will in the writings of Louisa. He talked about it with Monsignor Cuisar, and he gave my father a recommendation letter so that Cardinal Rassinger could receive him. Once in Italy, they first went to Corrado, to the house of Louisa, the see of the association of Luisa Picaretta, founded by Sister Assunto Margliano. They had an interview with the Archbishop of Trani, Monsignor Giuseppe Carata, who had recognized and approved three years before the Pious Association. And they told them in Italy that they were going to visit His Eminence, Cardinal Rassinger. Monsignor Carata told them some interesting facts so that they could mention them to the Prefect Cardinal. That soon that they were able to beatify the Venerable Father Annabelle Maria de Francia, Luisa's extraordinary confessor, ecclesiastical censor of the writings of Luisa, and first editor of the Hours of the Passion, which were published under his responsibility and with his own name, making several editions in Italian and then translated into German, and been placed in the index of forbidden books. And now they were going to beatify him. In the Vatican, my parents were admitted into the private mass of Cardinal Ratzinger, and afterwards they approached him. My father, as soon as he came out of that interview, briefly wrote the main ideas treated with his eminence. And these ideas are such, as follows, that I was the author of the appendix, which we just described. He remembered well the bishop. I showed him photos of the chapel with him. He told me this was very important in order to be united with the church. I went directly to talk about Luisa and the writings. I gave him the abstracts that I prepared, which he skimmed through. I explained a little about living in the divine volition and the current importance of the writings, and that the bishop thought that they were wonderful. I told him that they hadn't been approved, that they should be revised, that there were there in all the office, that I was actually not asking this for me, 
but for so many souls. He told me that maybe they hadn't revised them properly. I answered that maybe that wasn't the time, but that now it was. That it is already time. That it is needed to promote them. He told me that he was going to read them attentively. I also gave him the copies that Sister Osunta gave me and told him that Monsignor Carata told me about Father Annabelle de Francia, copies of the Hours of the Passion, and the Queen of Heaven, published by him with his name. They are going to beatify him in October. These were the main ideas. He thanked me and said that I should continue to do everything with the bishop. I said goodbye. After that, I waited for him outside the chapel to take a picture with him, to put it in the chapel, to which he gladly agreed. I repeated that what pertained to Louisa was very important for the church, and he gave us his blessing, and we said goodbye. In the street, I met once again the personal secretary to whom I had also spoke to about Louisa, who didn't know. Now, he knows about her, and I will be able to write to him, giving them more writings. When I came back to Mexico, my dad talked to Monsignor Guizar about the interview with Cardinal Ratzinger. Afterwards, at the beginning of July of the same year, he selected other chapters of the writings of Louisa and sent them to the Cardinal with a letter that, between other things, said, I had next other paragraphs selected from different volumes of Louisa, which some of them make us see a luminous future for the Holy Church and for humanity, and a brief biography of Louisa. The text selected and handed to the Cardinal in both cases are the ones found at the beginning of the book in Spanish, selected passages without a title on page 25 and 49. As an answer, my dad received a letter with the heading Joseph Cardinal Rassinger, in which the personal secretary confirmed having received the shipping and assured the blessing of the Cardinal. Now, I'm going to interject a few words myself here. There was a mention of the translation of the books published by St. Annabel de Francia, and that they were translated into German. What the author, and perhaps Jose Luisa Acuna, did not know at the time is that Cardinal Ratzinger, who would later become Pope Benedict, was already familiar with the writings of Luisa from those German translations. Not that he was, I'm not saying that he was well versed, but he was definitely familiar with them, and also the content of the writings, not just being familiar with the fact that the writings existed. He knew about the writings at this point. Next is a description of some commentary from Jose Luis Acuna concerning the beatification of who is now St. Annabel de Francia. In October of the same year of 1990, Monsignor Guizar Diaz traveled once again to Rome to assist to the Synod of Bishops about the priestly formation, and there, providentially, was president of beatification of Father Annabelle de Francia. The fact of the beatification of Father Annabelle is very significant. This is, means that after investigating the facts of the books placed in the index, this was not an obstacle. What it is more, with the beatification of Blessed Annabelle de Francia, his writings have also been approved by the Church, and therefore also the prefaces of the works of Louisa. And he was also canonized in 2004. Thus the Church has approved everything that St. Annabelle says about Louisa, her mission, and her writings and she puts him as an example for us in these times. After the beatification of Father Annabel, Monsignor Ricardo Quizar 
went to see Cardinal Rassinger once again and spoke to him about Luisa Picaretta, her writings, and the fact that the beatification of Father Annabelle, the one who had published The Hours of the Passion, who had written the introduction of that book, and had given testimony about the importance of the mission and the writings of Luisa in the church. His eminence answered him, saying, All of the writings of Luisa must be approved. They also talked about the need to open the clause of Luisa's beatification in the Archdiocese of Trani, so that the Archbishop of Trani could ask the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith copies of the writings of Luisa, so they could be revised and approved. Subsequently, Monsignor Guizar went to Corrado, to the Association of Luisa Picaretta, celebrated Holy Mass there, and met with the Archbishop of Trani, Monsignor Giuseppe Garata, notifying him about the conversation that he had had with Cardinal Ratzinger. Meanwhile, in Mexico, the interest for the writings of Luisa was growing, which were being translated by my father and handed out privately in the form of photocopies. Because of this, he thought in editing The Hours of the Passion in order to make it orderly in communion with the Church, according to the device of Cardinal Ratzinger. He first informed the bishop and asked a letter from him. Monsignor Quizar, re relying on the words spoken by Carla Rassinger, all the writings must be approved, wrote the recommendation letter that appears at the beginning of the book, The Hours of the Passion, with the date of January 22, 1991. He did the same in 1992, giving another special letter for the book, Selected Passages, and further on in 1999 for the book, The Virgin Mary, in the kingdom of the divine will. In 1991, His Excellency Carmelo Casadi was a successor of Monsignor Carrada in the Archdiocese of Trani. Monsignor Guizar told him about the words of Cardinal Rassinger referring the opening of Luisa's cause. Therefore, His Excellency Casadi worked to realize it and much more than his predecessor had the intention of doing. In February of 1994, the Archbishop of Trani received from the Congregation for the Cause of the Saints the Neely Opstadt to initiate officially the Ossesian can Canon process for the beatification of Luisa and in the Solemnity of Christ the King in November 20th, 1994 in the Mother Church of Corrado the cause of beatification of the servant of God, Luisa Picaretta, initiates with a solemn mass. At the beginning of 1996, the Archdiocese of Trani obtains from the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, presided by Cardinal Rassinger, the permission of photocopying all the volumes of Luisa that were found in the files of the Congregation since 1938 in order to be read and studied by the authorized people by the tribunal of the cause of Luisa, in order to be sensed and approved by the competent authority, and finally, to be published. In a way, that thanks to our solemn pontiff, Benedict XVI, the process of beatification of Luisa is in course and so that all her writings can be approved, as he said. So I'd like to add some other fact that I'm aware of, is that those photocopying, involved in the photocopying of the documents from 1938, are some people that we are aware of in the divine will. And it's not an exhaustive list, but I'm doing it by memory so I know that Father John Brown was involved with that, as well as Father Celso, and either in the copying or the translation, Dr. Tomasini was also involved. And Father Celso mentioned that 
While they were doing the photocopying, they were visited by then Cardinal Ratzinger, who was very, very happy that this was occurring. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Pope Benedict XVI for his efforts. Also, St. John Paul II it was under his pontificate that the cause of Louisa began and asked that Pope Benedict continue to pray for Louisa's cause and for all of us attempting to live in God's holy divine will. Thank you for joining us today. Please like and subscribe. God bless.